Hi, this is Rosemary. Thanks for watching my video. We're going to learn how to grow some mushrooms today, especially if this is your first try. This should help you. You will need a straw bell. You must have a way of chopping this some. You can use a lawnmower over a paved area and gather it in a bag, or alternatively, you can buy a bag of chopped straw at a farm supply store. Nothing else added to it, of course. But you also need a bell of straw, also, because this is too fine by itself for this method to work. One solution, instead of using a lawnmower, that works well, is to get a bag of chopped straw and a regular bell of straw and mix the two. Then if you don't want to or can't chop some, it is already done for you. This will last through quite a few grows. Particle size is important in your straw substrate. So being very finely shredded or chopped, which purchase can be, you need to add it to some straw that is not chopped. You need a large and small straw for this method to work well. You can pick up a bale of straw from a farm supply feed store. Do not get hay as these are different products. To transport in a vehicle, you can put down a sheet, wrap it up so it does not make a mess. Straw can be heavy, so have a friend help you move it or break it into sections. To store the excess, you can break it into chunks and put it in garbage bags. It will be fine if it does not get wet, but do keep rodents out of it. A list of other items you will need. Oyster mushroom grain spawn, which you can order on Amazon, I believe Etsy, just look online, needs to be uh, preferably pearl oyster spawn. A container to grow in, a five or three gallon bucket with lid, a big flower pot, small dollar store clothes baskets, etc. A drill or tool to melt holes in the container, plastic wrap such as saran wrap, Wound tape, 3M micropore tape is what I use, and I get that on Amazon, but check your local pharmacy. And hydrated lime from the hardware store or a Home Depot. It's used in masonry. You will have to buy a large one. Store in buckets away from children and pets. Do not get garden lime. Get your container. A container can be a five gallon bucket, a three gallon bucket, like I said before, or really any kind of containers that can be washed well, wrapped up in saran wrap and filled with straw. People sometimes use large plastic nursery pots and drill. Sometimes small laundry baskets wrapped in saran wrap are used and the holes are added after the, it's wrapped. Ask if your store has buckets that you can recycle. Look around for ideas for containers. Do not use a container though that has had toxic products in them. You are growing food. And then after you get your container, drill some holes in your container. I use a large drill. This is about one half inch or maybe a little smaller. Be careful please, or you can burn them with a soldering iron. Please use caution when burning and melting plastics as the fumes are toxic. Do this outside with a fan, blowing all fumes away from you and others. I place my three inch hole or three holes about a half an inch around across down four different quadrants of the container. This seems to work well and it makes the mushrooms happy. Soak your substrate in water and lime. Now get your garbage can. Used is fine, just wash it good first. A broom works great for this to kind of clean it out and use some soap and water. Fill it with the estimated amount of straw. One garbage can full of straw yields for me about 15 gallons of pressed substrate. So just make sure that you have enough container space. You will have to judge this for yourself. An example would be if I filled my 32 gallon can with straw added water and the lime, then that would be most likely three five gallon buckets. Any leftover straw can be dried and put in a smaller container if you have enough spawn to add to it. Add water to cover the straw well in your trash can. Add your lime. I add three cups per large gar garbage can size. That's a 32 gallon size. If you have a smaller amount, 
You just need to guesstimate the amount of lime for your container of straw and water. Push around with a broom handle or a clean stick and let it soak approximately 19 to 24 hours. Lime raises the pH of your water and helps to deter unwanted bacteria so your oyster mycelium can get started. Soak your substrate in the water in lime by pressing down your straw water lime mix with something heavy to help it soak evenly. I use a piece of wire fencing weighed down with a 15 pound weight over a paver. They're all clean of course. Be creative. Just use non-toxic clean things for weights. When handling lime and lime water, wear gloves. Some people are sensitive to alkaline substances. Remove and dry your substrate to the right feel. Your substrate, that's the straw I'm talking about that you have soaked, needs to be damp but not wet. We remove ours with a pitchfork out of the can and then dry it on a table outside with a fan. We're just trying to get it damp and we mix it up good and we don't want dripping. We don't want really, really wet substrates. You can use your clean deck you've washed off if you need to. Some people soak their straw after putting it in a mesh bag and then they hang it for a day. This is something you have to work out. If your straw is wet, more contamination will take hold before your mushrooms can colonize your straw. I have ruined batches by putting too wet of a substrate in my buckets and then hot weather hit. If it is hot outside, it is best to put your buckets in a room temper temperature area to colonize. If it is really cold out, it'll slow it down considerably also. Most mushrooms like it in the 70s, but oysters will tolerate cooler weather. I have mine out in my greenhouse in winter, but I do live in a mild zone 9 area. Disposing of the lime water. I dump my lime water in a place outside that grows lots of weeds. Weeds like acidic soil, so that's one way of encouraging more friendly plants to grow there. If you are not comfortable with that, or that doesn't work for you, I would research different alternatives. Fill your container with straw and grain spawn. For approximately one quart of spawn, that is the mycelium that has been grown on grain, I wash my hands thoroughly. I use a very clean sanitized butter knife to get the spawn out of the jar or container. In the container, put in a few layers of straw, then add some grain spawn, about a cup. Add another straw layer and another cup. Repeat two more times. So really you're getting up about four layers of straw, then some, mice, then some grain spawn, then some straw, etc. I try to distribute my cup of spawn over the top, but I do not break it up too fine. I am convinced that the spores are happiest when they grow together. Wrap or tape your filled container. You are now ready to wrap your container if it has openings with saran wrap or if you're using buckets, you can just use one layer of micropore tape to seal off your individual holes that you have drilled or burned. If using saran wrap for, say, a pot, you must cut some one half inch holes and then tape over them but if using drilled containers, just cover each hole with a layer of tape. Your tape needs to be uh, almost an inch wide. You want to get a good grip on the, on the container. The oyster mushrooms will push through the micropore tape when they start to fruit. You will see little mini mushrooms. These are called pinning, and this are the pins. You're now ready to wait for mushrooms to arrive. When you see tiny mushrooms pinning, it is helpful to cover with a large, light, clear plastic bag. If you are growing indoors or with dry air, this is even more important to retain moisture. In very wet climates, you might be able to grow without covering. I like to mist twice a day at least under the covering to help keep the dryness at bay when I see pins. I live in a very dry climate. This is a picture of one of my grows. Just the other day I ate these. This is out of a three gallon container. I bought a stack of them for a dollar a piece with lids. So they've lasted me quite a while. When I get done with this, I'll wash it out again and I'll replant it. 
And this is my harvest I got just a week ago. These are my oyster mushrooms and some chicken eggs. In fact, they taste great together. Great combination, mushrooms and eggs. A word about growing mushrooms. Mushrooms are a wonderful, often medicinal fungi, but growing them where people breathe the same air continually can be a problem to some people because of the spores they produce. Mushrooms only produce those spores in the later fruiting stage, so please be aware of this. Some people grow outside like I do, and some grow in basements where they have air purifiers helping them out. It works just fine to keep your mushroom containers in a room temperature environment till they start pinning, but you are going to have to watch them closely. They do tend to sneak up on you if they are out of sight and out of mind. I want you to be happy growing and the best of success for you. Thanks for watching my video and please help me by subscribing for more mushroom related topics and homesteading topics. Please see my other videos on how to grow mushrooms spawn yourself and how to properly cook mushrooms for the best result. Well, good luck on your grow, and it's exciting to do new things. Bye-bye.